from his university in Malawi. He's graduated, he graduated from a magazine to in line, where he did his PhD with Joseph McKinsey. And his research interests are in uh, high dimensional computational geometry, metric embedding, cellular algorithms, screening, algorithms for massive data sets, and theoretical machine learning. And today he's going to talk about cellular algorithms by application. So I'm kind of more in theory community, and uh, so and you know this, this talk is a bit more technical than uh, perhaps some of the talks uh, from uh, from previous days. Uh, so the, the main thrust is you know really talking about essentially a sampling technique. You know, like the, the, it's a specific question, uh, but uh, uh, before going uh, there, you know I, I'll, I'll just tell you kind of you know, a couple slides about what I mean by sampling algorithms, right? And this is Essentially, a topic of interest in, in the Ethereum community, you know, which obviously some of the challenges from massive data sets. Uh, and uh, let me mention that uh, this, uh, this slide are uh, based on some work with uh, Robert Tompkin from my Institute and with Shishta Fana from uh, Senior. Okay, so some of the algorithms, uh, this is just, you know, like really kind of very high level uh, kind of toy slides. Uh, so, algorithms, you know, usually we are thinking that, you know, you know, we have, you have some data, you have some resources, a computer, you want to solve uh, some problem for this data, you know, you, you go to a textbook algorithm, you get an algorithm, and you know, you implement it and solve it. And, uh, you know, we were happy when the algorithms are fast, and generally our kind of global standard was, you know, linear time, which means that, you know, you, you run, you use time and space, which is roughly proportional to the size. Now, you know, of course, you know, everybody knows that you know, data looks like this, and, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, you know, at least one way kind of to view this or to model how to approach such day, uh, such problems, such situations, is to think where computer resources are much less than the amount of data, and uh, this leads to you know starting some linear algorithms. Uh, uh, where else is that an easy way? In particular, you know, we think uh, at least there are two ways to think about this. One is limited space, where you are saying that memory is much less than hard drive. Uh, and I'll show you a scenario of this on, on the next slide. Another is limited time, where the time that you are required to spend on this is uh, is much less than the time to read the entire data. So more or less, it's just a Um So this is um, you know this is related to streaming algorithms and property testing algorithms that have been studied for many years in, in the community. So you know, there's kind of not nothing really new, but I just want to put it in perspective. Uh, so he, he, let me give you a subliner scenario, which is more related to this talk. Uh, so this is an algorithm, uh, and imagine you have packets passing through. Uh, you know there are many of so these are just you know IP addresses. And uh, suppose you you know the algorithm wants to store some statistics on this, right? So you have uh, say the traffic that passed through. This is you know the, the kind of the path, the the, the histogram of the traffic that passed through. Uh, usually, of course, this table looks like uh, very large, uh, and um, uh, of course, you know, this doesn't really fit on the router to, to store it. Uh, so the challenge here is really to compute something of this table, some statistics, using small space. So we really want this to do like this, right? Um, now, you know, such compression doesn't work. I mean, 
So the thing is, this one can be more perfect here. Uh, you cannot just draw the table, but let me give you know, some examples of what is this uh, something. Uh, you know, imagine you want to compute the number of distinct IPs, you know, different, say, um, formations that are established, say, uh, the moments of these frequencies they had for, you know, detecting some inclusion detection, to do some inclusion detection attacks, where, you know, general statistics are yet. So this is kind of the setting. Uh, and, uh, you know, where does it come from? Like, well, uh, let me kind of give you a couple more scenarios. Well, what we just saw, you know, this is data passing through the router, previous slide. Uh, another one you can, uh, where this notion of, uh, what is called streaming algorithm, uh, uh, where it appears is when, say, your data is stored on a, uh, on a hard drive, and you think of, you know, your, say, processor and memory being much less than the hard drive, and what you can do, you can stream data from the hard drive. Uh, and, um, you know, in, in practice, it turns out that it is much much more efficient to do just linear scan, scan over the data rather than doing random access. So, you know, you can model this as uh, essentially streaming your data from hard drive through the processor or through the network. Okay. okay. Uh, so, this is the setting. Um, you know, there are naturally there are many applications, uh, say, network log, sensor data, real time data. I mean, Actual routers on the network. Um, so, uh, so this is kind of the motivation. Now, what I what I want to talk here is uh, essentially a particular uh, construct. I mean, it's you know intended to be a theorem uh, or a lemma that I want to talk about uh, that uh, turns out to simplify or give some algorithms in this set, right? And uh, so now we are switching a bit gears, and I'm, you know, becoming slightly technical at this moment. And uh, what I want to talk about is a particular primitive that I will show later how it is useful for this type of problems. And this is very related to sampling, right? The sampling that you know it more. Right? Uh, so you know, a common primitive that you know often appears is uh, you know you want to estimate a sum. So think of this as you have n quantities, say one up to a n. Uh, in the range between 0 and 1, you know, representing, say, you know, how much traffic passed through, uh, say, this is the picture. So you have different, say, computers having some different aspects of the data. So there is a, say, partition. We have different aspects of the data. And, uh, say, A1 is statistics on this data, A2 is statistics on this data. And suppose you have to sum. Right? So, you know, you, you, you can model many scenarios this way. Um, and also later, but the main point is that you want, you know, there is some monitor that wants to estimate the sum. And this is, you know, the, the setting where I'm thinking about it a lot. And, uh, you know, this, this is the problem, right? And you want to estimate cheaply, not using too many resources, right? Uh, so what is one way to do it? Uh, well, one, one very common way to do it is, well, let's just start up, right? So, say, you, you don't require that everybody sends you your numbers, you say you want to minimize the communication, or, you know, some, you don't want everybody to go and compute their actual numbers, say, one after the end. So, you say that, well, you know, just a subset will send me their numbers, and I will use the subset to compute the sum. And, you know, this is kind of the first, you know, sampling thing to do. Uh, you subset a number of them, say, n, out of n. And uh, you know this is an optimization graph, and that would be your estimator. And uh, then you apply, say, a standard bound, say, a Chevrolet bound, who we'll say that with say 90 percent success probability, your estimator, this S tilde, will be you know say factor two approximator uh, plus minus some constant some term, which is roughly you know some constant times n divided by n. Okay. So if you, you know, if your sum is, uh, if, if, I mean, if it is that you expect to be roughly proportional to the max value, which is roughly n, but you don't expect to sample many of them, it's sufficient to, to sample a few. On the other hand, if you really uh, strive for a very small error, uh, think of this as, say, additive constant, for a additive constant error, you, you want this term to be roughly constant, then you really need to sample almost everybody. Right? If you if everybody has a number between zero and one, right, and you want your error up to plus minus ten, for example, 
then you know this can be hidden in just a few of these uh, machines. So you need to sample it over. And uh, so this is roughly you know where precision sampling comes. Um, so uh, so it's the same problem, but when uh, switching the training. So this is the slide that you know, something here appears now. Um, okay, so we think about this as uh, uh, accessing this data is slightly different. So it is, think of this as a kind of new model of something. Uh, so again, we have the same setting where we have this uh, you know, number of computers saying this, uh, containing these numbers A1 and <coughs> AN. Uh, and the monitor again wants to estimate the sum. Now what it does, Rather than just getting a subsample of them, it will you know, it will want an estimate for each of them, but for different precisions. So it picks some numbers c1 up to u u n, and uh, it, it tells the computer, tell me this number a1 up to precision u1. So u1 is some numbers, a0.01. So it tell me this 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 number up to this precision. And what means to after this precision it means that the absolute difference is upper bounded by this precision. Okay? So it says this number says well tell me after this precision, and uh, these guys send back this estimator, and then it uses these uh, estimators for each of the numbers to compute the entire sum. Okay? And uh, the challenge here is, of course, to, I mean, it should be a trade off between something, right? So, one, on the one hand, we want to achieve as good an approximation to S. Basically, we want this S tilde to be as close to the, to the real sum. One, and two, uh, I, you, you don't want to require too much out of each computer. I mean, a typical solution would be to go to each one and say, give me this, putting all the UIs to be equal to zero and saying that give me precisely that number. Right? So I mean we didn't get far. So the trick here is to say that well we want to get a good estimate, but by requiring you know very coarse precision. Because think of this uh, the the model being or motivation being that uh, it, it requires resources for this computer to compute this number A1. And the, the course of the precision, the less resources it requires, say time. Okay? So this is, this is really kind of the setting. So let me, uh, uh, let me uh, give a formalization of this. You know, because this will be more clear. Uh, I'm seeing what, what Uh, okay, so formulation is that think of this as essentially a game between two players. One is a sum estimator, you know, the guy who actually wants to compute the sum, the monitor, right? Uh, a1 up to sum of a1 up to a n, and the other is a dresser. You think of this as some kind of noise. And uh, what happens is that, in, you know, they fix uh, their things separately, so the, 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 the sum estimator uh, chooses some precisions. Uh, so it's an algorithm to compute these decisions, uh, and um, and that's the decisions with numbers, or nature, basically. Uh, then what happens is that the, the adversary uh, learns the precisions, the required precisions, and fits out these estimators, a tildes, that satisfy the precision requirement. And uh, given a number sum estimator, says that okay, now I learned the estimators for each number in one of one. Uh, and uh, given these things, I compute some S tilde, some uh, uh, the sum estimator, such that say it is a good, good uh, approximation, say up to additive constant error. Okay. Now, I mean, it's clear what you know. It needs to be good in terms of uh, estimating the sum. Now, here is the notion of cost of precision. As I said, we can always set the precision to be equal to zero and Without be single, right? Um, trivial. Um, so what is cost, right? We need to put some notion of cost on our precision, on the required vision precision. And uh, here, here I'll define. I mean, it, it's a choice, right? You can imagine different options. I will fix one. 
uh, which is the average of one over precision. Okay, so if precision is is uh, coarse, meaning you say it is 0 0.5, right? Then this number will be relatively small too. However, if I find precision to be very uh, very fine, say you know closer to zero, then it suddenly begins to uh, increase in cost. And uh, there is a particular reason to choose this precision. I mean, first of all, because it's useful in our applications, and two, you can think of you know, coming back to this motivating uh, example where these AIs are themselves, say, a sum, right? It is these computers which has one particular AI, it has to compute this, uh, this uh, number AI. And uh, if it is a sum of something else, and it requires some precision, then this is roughly how many sub samples do we need. So if you want to estimate the sum of precision UI, uh, then you roughly need one of your UI resources, and for space or samples or something. Um, so it is natural to measure it this way. Uh, so let, let me give you an example of you know something with at least bounded cost. Right? Uh, so we can choose all the precisions to be roughly one over I am, and uh, the average cost will be roughly proportional to that. And uh, I, I view it as relatively less. I mean, we want to achieve better than this. And the thing is that if your estimator, you know, the algorithm of compute the estimator as tilde just sums up the estimates for each AA tilde, then this is the best possible. You cannot, you, you cannot go below this cost. Uh, so we will want something better, and this is what we show that you can, there is an algorithm, you know, relatively simple algorithm that, that uh, manages to, to go below this number in this frame. So this is just, you know, taking the goal uh, succinctly. Uh, this is the lemma, which uh, says that again, you know, say 90% success probability, you get uh, something, say, 1.5 of the most negative error, say, constant additive error. Probably means this, and the average cost is much less, it's only logarithmic in that. Okay, so in particular, it means that you know our estimate of the field doesn't just sum up the estimates for each a field separately. Um, and let me give you an example why this in some sense is even possible. I mean, this you know, may or not be obvious. Um, none of it. Um, so let me give you kind of two extreme examples where things that the entire mass is either a three or a zero, right? The sum is either three or zero, and we want to distinguish between these two cases. And you can think of depending on how this mass is spread between these AIs, there are two two cases, right? Um, uh, two extreme cases. One extreme case would be where all this mass is really concentrated on in, on some particular computers. So this is the case where the subsampling, they just subsample several of them, would fail. Uh, so here, you know, know that essentially it is enough to use a crude approximation follower. So if you choose UIs, which say are 0 0.1, you are able to distinguish between red numbers uh, being either 0 or 1. And, uh, here it is uh, the case when it is the mass is uniform. Then here, to some degree, you can, in some sense, you can use the subsample. When you just subsample few very good precisions, roughly proportional to one over n, and the rest you use the good. Okay, this is just to say that you can throw in epsilons here and get the one percent, one percent of one particular error. And uh, you know, here is. Here is actually the algorithm, right? I'll just show you the algorithm how we get this, right? And to say that this is relatively simple. Uh, it turns out that, you know, there, there, there is, I, I think this is very close to call UI. Um, there is, uh, so it's enough to, to choose them uniformly at random between 0 and 1, ID, and then it's still not just count the number of files I put in that inequality. So this is all. Uh, okay, so uh, so that I, you know, this is 
is not really true. This is proof. Of, this is proof of truth. Uh, proof of existence. Uh, all right. So okay, this is uh, for epsilons. Uh, so, uh, so, so the rest of the slide will be roughly uh, in the same style, like proof of existence, kind of rather than actually, uh, uh, rather than explaining. Um, so, one, you know, why do we, why is this useful? It turns out that you can compute norms and moments of frequencies, you know, of this table, some statistics, uh, more efficiently. Uh, there's one paper, uh, and then the other. Uh, in some other work, we showed that you know this technique will help you save some time. Uh, in particular, it uh, helps us you know, getting better algorithms for edge distance. Um, I think I'm running out of time, so I'll just skip to you know, the end. This is this is the entire algorithm that I showed it cheats in a slide. Um, from the related work, you know. It's not in um, So this is really the component slide that we just, you know, mentioned several questions that you know, I find interesting. Uh, one is whether you know, some of the, some other applications for uh, present something framework, you know, getting better algorithms, or in general, you know, can we think of other forms of access for these number says to get better estimated. Um, Okay, I guess uh, I'll finish here. Thank you. Yeah, no, right. 